Last week we heard of John the Baptist and his call to repentance, and this week we hear that John came as a witness to testify to the light that all might believe through him. As disciples, you and I are also called to testify to uh, the light and to witness to the light. And the light we're talking about is the light of salvation, the light of the joyful good news of Christmas that the Savior, Christ the Lord, has come. The light is a Jesus. We don't give witness to an idea about the light. We give witness to the person of Jesus Christ. We give witness to our faith in Jesus through our words and actions. There's a funny little story I read of a man who was tailgating the car in front of him, and as the light turned yellow, the car stopped. The tailgater was furious because he wanted to run the yellow light and get through the intersection. He was still in his mid-rant when he heard a tap on his window and looked up into the face of a very serious police officer. The officer took him to the police station, fingerprinted, and placed him in a holding cell. After a couple hours, the police officer came and said, I'm very sorry for this mistake. You see, I pulled up behind your car while you were blowing your horn, giving the guy in front of you the finger and yelling at him. And I noticed the what would Jesus do bumper sticker and the keep Christ in Christmas magnet. So naturally, I assumed that you had stolen the car, right? (laughs) That's a perfect example of not being a good witness, right? Like his bumper sticker and his magnet expressed he had faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior, but his actions and words did not give witness to the same. As I reflected on my uh, witness, the examples of, of giving witness in my life, wouldn't you know it was the poor examples that I've given, right? When I wasn't a good witness, those came to mind first. And as I was thinking about it, you know, it just, our poor witness just stands out more. It's just more visible. It's more noticeable than our good witness, right? John the Baptist was an exceptionally good witness. He was so good, in fact, by his words and deeds that people thought that he might be the Messiah and, and he, that he might be the Savior. But John was quick to uh, straighten them out and say, no, I'm not the Messiah. And in fact, he was quick to point them to Jesus, who is the only Lord and Savior Messiah. And after 2,000 years, John the Baptist is still an inspirational witness uh, to us. Now, chances are you and I won't be mistaken for the Messiah. But how can we be uh, more like John the Baptist and give that good witness to the light? Uh, We can give that good witness to Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Well, the first thing is our our reliance on the Holy Spirit, right? John the Baptist had experienced the Holy Spirit while in the womb of his mother, Elizabeth, and his uh, attentiveness to the Holy Spirit did not waver throughout his life. We need the Holy Spirit just to help us even recognize the opportunities we have to witness. We might just not even notice them. Um, and we need the Holy Spirit for the wisdom to know how to witness, right? What to say and, and what to do or what not to say or what not to do, right? And we need the Holy Spirit sometimes to give us the courage to do or say the uh, things that will be a good witness. We also need to be clear that what we're speaking about and when we say that we're being a witness is that, the, that it's not about me, right? That we're pointing to Jesus who alone is the light. And there's, 
many of opportunities to witness to the light, you know, at home, at work, in our neighborhood, uh, at the hockey rink, the coffee shop, wherever. There are many opportunities, but that doesn't mean that it's an easy thing to do. It doesn't mean that it's always obvious to us. And so again, it's, you know, we need to turn to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Give me the wisdom. Give me the insight. Give me the courage that I need to be a good witness. Because it's just, our poor witness is just more easily visible than our good witness. There's an opportunity for witnessing coming up that involves all of us here together. It's the witness uh, of our Christmas hospitality. And it's an area that we can readily see the difference between a, a good witness and a poor witness. At Christmas, we have many guests and visitors that, that come here. And because this is uh, our parish, right? this is our spiritual home, we are the hosts. And as hosts, we have the opportunity to make a difference for our guests, an opportunity to witness to the light, to witness to the faith we have in Jesus as my Lord and Savior, who is the source of our joy. Now, we all know what it means to host someone in our homes, right? When our guests arrive, we welcome them. We welcome them uh, warmly. Uh, Pope Francis, some years ago, famously remarked that we should not be Christians with sour faces. Right? Do you remember that? And he's, in another place, he said we shouldn't be sour pusses, right? Um, so for our guests to meet grumpy uh, parishioners, right, um, it's not going to help them to want to come back, let alone want to know more about uh, the light. So each of us is a host, and so we want to be gracious hosts because our witness of our hospitality will give a positive environment uh, for others to hear the good news message of Christmas. Now, besides having a joyful and welcoming demeanor, there's a very practical witness of hospitality called gifting your seat. Basically, it's making room in the inn. It's about making it easy for guests to find a seat and a parking spot. Now, I've had these conversations in the past, and I, I know it's not possible for everyone to participate in this for all kinds of good reasons. So when I, I'm qualifying, saying, if this is possible for you and your family situation, uh, gifting your seat means offering your seat to one of our guests. Uh, you can do this by coming to a, a later a Christmas Eve Mass in particular, right? The, the earliest Mass is always the fullest, often has been overflowing. Uh, and, and, and so coming to a later Mass, uh, and especially the 11 p.m., is, is least attended. Another way to gift your seat, again, if this is possible, is to volunteer to go to one of the overflow areas so that there are seats available here, even for uh, some latecomers. Now, gifting your seat also applies to the parking lot, either parking uh, across the street or on the side streets or carpooling so that there's ample parking for our guests. Witnessing by uh, uh, being gracious hosts and making our guests feel comfortable and welcome is no guarantee that they will see our faith in Jesus. But I guarantee you that if they encounter sour faces and no room at the inn, it'll be very difficult for them to see our faith in Jesus. So like John the Baptist, we want to be witnesses to the light so that others might come to believe. Our, our Christmas hospitality is just one small example of our witnessing. Through our warm and welcoming hospitality, we help prepare the way for hearts to be open to the joyful good news of our salvation. Also, as part of our good witnessing, 
we want to pray now in advance for our guests that the Holy Spirit would open their hearts to hear the good news message of Christmas and that they would come to a deeper knowledge of who Jesus is. Right? They would come to a deeper knowledge of the light, that they would come to a deeper knowledge of Jesus as their Lord and Savior.